Joey, can we go back to 1978 for a moment? Why? Well, I mean, you were on a show that I would watch every Saturday morning, which was American Bandstand. Okay, yes. And um, when did you find out and how did you find out that you were going to be interviewed by Dick Clark? Well, I had, a, uh, I was on Millennium Records at that time and the single had uh, just come out and as, that, as it was moving up the charts, I think one, in one week, I did like five TV shows. Donnie and Marie, American Bandstand. Um, I, I did this thing called 36 Most Beautiful Girls in Texas, which was, I worked with all the te- uh, cowboy cheerleaders. And uh, the, uh, Christy McNichol and the brothers, they had a show. So it was like a, in one week, I was like on all those shows. But uh, I always remember uh, the, uh, the American Bandstand because we had a rule in our family that you had to be a teenager to watch American Bandstand. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Did your mom see that interview? Uh, she did see that, yes. She did see it because uh, she had passed a little after that, but she did get to see all those shows. Yeah. Do you remember what it was like to go? I mean, because they had that the dancers and the audience there. Yeah, right? it was cool. I'm, well, I remember growing up with it as a kid, and just to be there live, and uh, it, it, it was, uh, you know, it, it was fun, you know, to to have your. But you know, it's funny because all the TV spots that I did, I was more excited about being in a car on the way to the radio station and hearing the song over the radio. I don't know why that was more exciting to me than than being on television. I just like the idea of it being on radio. Why? I'm old school. WKRP in Cincinnati, great show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you said in that interview with Dick Clark in 1978 that you had $50 in your pocket? I had $50 in my pocket. Oh God, I don't remember. That. Okay. I think that's what it said. And so, what was life I like? I had fifty dollars in my pocket. Uh, I said that. Sure, maybe or when at the at that moment. I don't know if like okay. really you did or metaphorically you had it oh, in your bank okay. account. Um, what was like? What was life like for you before that interview, and then mm-hmm. after? What was it like for you? Because all that exposure. I know you yeah. said you weren't as excited. I don't know. I you know. T- it, it was the same to me. It wasn't really that, life didn't change that much. I didn't think, because we were in and, and around show business, so it wasn't like, I don't know, it just, I, I, I live the same way I do now as I did before uh, I had any exposure on television, so. Where did you envision your life going at that time? Um, well, I, you know, I knew I was going to be doing TV, but when I got an offer to do the movie Sunnyside, uh, and I stepped foot on my first set, you know, my whole life changed then. That was the, what I love, and what I love, and that's how I learned filmmaking, from being on the set. And when I got to set, I was there every day, because I was the star of the show, so I was in and around everything. And I wanted to know what the cameraman did. I wanted to know what the grip did, what the electrician. So as you know, it's hurry up and wait on these shoots and to be there and have a bird's eye view of what everybody did. But the thing that was the, the aha moment was that it became a family and everybody worked together, all these people doing very, very different jobs, but all necessary to have that final outcome. That was like really cool to me. That's what got me interested in doing production and doing films, was that feeling on the set. And the education that took place. I was lucky because I was on set every day and I was getting paid, you know? And I had the time and I used that time to learn what everybody did. And every time I ever worked, I I would do that. Because I was creating things and writing and stuff like that, but you know, to hands-on nuts and bolts producing and stuff like that, that, that's where I learned all that stuff. When that production wrapped, 
how soon after did you say, you know what, maybe my life is going to take another direction. Maybe music won't be first and foremost. Uh, yeah, I was more into acting at that time. But at the same time, I was really interested in production. So once I started acting, you get the, you know, the, you get the bug to do that, to do that more. But I always had my sights on production. I always liked the sense of everybody getting together and working together. I love that aspect of filmmaking. And did you like the being busy too? Some people aren't good I waiters. Have to be. That's why directing <laughs> is the best because you're involved with everything. So, you know, you 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 know, they they come to you for guidance. So, you're involved with everything, but I used to do all the prep and all the post too. And I all, I learned all that by doing hence practical film workshops that that I'm doing today teaching Folks with developmental disabilities, filmmaking, that all came from that, you know, from from that. With inclusion films, right? Yeah.